Hi everyone, this is Dr. Varun Jain. I am an MDS orthodontist and also an international specialist visiting consultant at UAE. Uh, I am over here to talk to you, all of you about the coronavirus. Yes, the coronavirus. Uh, this coronavirus had hit the whole world much before then it has come to India. There's been a lot of panic in India off late because of the rising numbers that we're facing every point in time. I'm over here to talk to you, educate you about what is coronavirus, how do you deal with it, do we need to do certain things, we don't need to do certain things, how do we change our day-to-day -day lifestyle and what can affect what in what ways. All right, so the first thing that we want to know about is what is coronavirus? Is this something which is new to us? So yeah, part of it, yes, it is something which is new to us, but not completely new. It belongs to certain viruses that we have encountered earlier to its same family. Like we've had MERS, SARS. These were a few viruses that had come to the humankind earlier. Like the last was at Abu Dhabi in 2012, where uh, we faced certain situations like this, but we all came out victorious and successful. So do we need to really worry about uh, this coronavirus at this point in time? Like the biggest question is, are we going to die? Absolutely not. It's going to be absolutely safe. You just have to be a little careful, a little precautious. At the end of the day, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So uh, the <clears throat> second thing that people would really want to know about is what is the origin of this virus? So basically, uh, this virus, as we all know, this originated from the Wuhan territory in China. Uh, it was basically supposed to be something which was, uh, it, it, it started from the animal origin, but now the problem is it's no more the animal origin. It's spreading from human to human. That's how the spread has increased. Let's talk about the spread of this virus. So uh, people say this is not airborne, but it's droplet infection. So what is the difference between airborne and droplet infection? So an airborne infection is something which will be traveling into the air and its surrounding areas. What is a droplet infection is when I'm talking to you or say suppose when I'm coughing, I sneeze or uh, when I'm talking out loud, when I'm talking, there might be certain amount of saliva droplets which might be falling out of my mouth. When these saliva droplets come out, they don't have a very long travel span. So they cannot be in your air for a very long time. What happens with them is they will just be there and can travel only up to one meter. So when they are there up to a distance of one meter, the saliva droplets from me can travel to someone who's very nearby to me. If I am affected uh, with the virus, if I'm talking to someone, that person can also get affected with it because the saliva has the viral particles in it which will get spread. Uh, suppose if I am just sitting over here, not talking to anyone and if I happen to cough, what happens? A cough, sneeze or if I am affected with the virus, how does this virus spread? As I told you earlier, this virus has a travel span of or a transverse, transversible span of only one meter. So when we are coughing or sneezing, these droplets, they get into the air and then they settle down at any kind of surfaces around us. Now when and uh, the Annoying part over here is that we don't know how much is the lifespan of this uh, virus when it settles on a surface. So that's why it is affected uh, many people from one to the other. What happens is, suppose if this settles down at any kind of surface, then uh, suppose if I, I go and I happen to get in contact with that surface, now I have the virus from that surface onto my body. Onto my body, am I affected already? No, I am not. So if the virus is on my body, it does not affect me. It, does, it cannot penetrate my skin. But suppose if I am, uh, you know, after, after having a virus contacted with me, if I happen to, if I happen to like, uh, you know, rub my eyes, pick my nose, or happen to put my finger in my mouth, eat something, then yes, the virus spreads from my finger to that uh, food, what I'm going to, you know, uh, be consuming or also, if I'm rubbing my eyes, picking my nose, it might just travel and that's when I get infected. So this is how the spread of the coronavirus can take place. So now what do we have to do with this? Certain do's and don'ts. 
as you all know how the spread is do not panic do not worry about this the do's that you really have to be taking care of at this point in time is make sure that in case if you have traveled abroad anywhere where there has been a lot of cases registered for coronavirus you happen to be a responsible citizen a responsible individual a responsible society member where you isolate yourself willingly isolation is for people you love people you care if you isolate yourself your loved ones will not get affected and that's so important isn't it i would not want my family to get affected with is- uh, with the corona virus when i am affected with it if one gets affected the next one can get high probable chances of getting affected too so we need to be careful on that so uh, what do we again need to do is suppose uh, if i am not affected i am not into isolation i am carrying on with my day to day habits what i need to do is i need to make sure that i am not having a lot of contact with a lot of individuals people have started practicing less of handshakes yeah that's because the virus can get transmitted like that so we we avoid handshakes obviously it's not totally avoidable but try and avoid as much as you can uh, also wash your hands as much as possible keep them clean because these are the areas from where the virus can enter your body very soon until unless that somebody comes up to you and just talks to you on your face and have some droplets come on you where the whether you know where the infection gets a direct access into you other than that this is the only area where you can get the infection very soon so avoid uh putting your hands in the mouth as i said wash your hands very well in case if you're out you're traveling and you cannot wash your hands routinely carry a sanitizer with you now hand sanitizers are of different types you don't want some hand sanitizers which is like you know lovely to smell has a it has a very awesome fragrance fine that all is there but nobody is going to appreciate your fragrance towards your your overall well being your overall health so normally it is advised by the who the world health organization that your sanitizer should have a minimum content of 60% of alcohol in it uh the virus is not really very strong uh it can be it can be really uh, curtailed very easily in case if you use sanitizer it might just get back to your normal self and not have any kind of infection with it so these are certain pro- precautions that you can take uh by keeping your hand you know uh, clean using sanitizers uh, also if you're using a lot of you know hand uh, hand wash a lot of sanitizers you might happen happen to lose the you know the moisture from your skin so you can even moisturize your skin uh, make sure you're not eating anything avoid travel i was to travel a couple of days ago back to the uae for my professional visits but i have cancelled it uh it's better safe to be sorry as i said if you can not travel see uh, just travel in case if it is unavoidable that's how i would want to sum it in case if it is unavoidable you have to have to do it please do it otherwise if you can avoid please avoid we've seen a lot of uh, revised travel advisories come in being from the government of india where they are advising people not to travel uh, they have held back the visas for a lot of foreign uh, you know countries and uh, we don't know how this would further mold up but all i would like to say is do not panic it's not a very strong viral infection 83% of people yes out of 100 83 people will recover absolutely fine what about the rest of the 17% the 17% can get a little mild to moderate critical but this infection this viral infection only has a uh, a fatality rate of 2% like sare nahi marte isme it's absolutely fine aap theek ho jayenge sirf itna dhyan rakhiye आपको हाथ साफ रखने हैं आपको सैनिटाइजर यूज करना है आपको रिस्पॉन्सिबल रहना है अगर आपको पता है कि आप में कुछ साइनल सिम्टम्स है कोल्ड फ्लू फीवर के तो जब आप कफ करें जब आप स्नीज करें तो यू मेक श्योर यूर यूजिंग योर हैंड एंड नॉट योर सॉरी यूर यूजिंग योर एल्बो एंड नॉट योर हैंड्स सपोज इफ यू आर यूजिंग अ टिश्यू पेपर आफ्टर यू यूज अ टिश्यू पेपर मेक श्योर दैट यूर डिस्कार्डिंग टिश्यू पेपर डायरेक्टली एंड नॉट री यूजिंग इट बिकॉज द टिश्यू पेपर ऑलरेडी हैज इन्फेक्शन नाउ so obviously you don't want to reuse that tissue paper again right so uh that's about it guys i think uh, i'm i'm good with this if there are any questions that you would want to know 
If there are any doubts that you have, please feel free to get in touch with me. I will be very happy to solve all your doubts and queries. I'll be coming back with one more video to help my dental colleagues and friends know what they can do in their day to day dental practices to avoid getting infected with this virus for themselves and their staffs. Thank you so much.